a machine can be brought into play so as to give several results at the same time which will greatly average the whole amount of processes. This was perhaps the first expression of the idea of multiprocessing on computer systems written by Luigi Federico Minabria in 1842 about the analytical engine of Charles Babbitt. And in today's video, we are going to have a look at what processes and threats actually are. So let's start using this analogy of factory and factory workers. So just as the factory provides all the required resources, a process also provides all the resources which are required. And just as the factory workers use all those resources provided by a factory in order to produce a product, all the threads also use the resources which are provided by the process in order to produce a output. Just as a factory can have multiple workers working on different tasks at the same time, a process can also have multiple threads executing different pieces of code at the same time. This is called multi-threading. Now, let's look into what are the properties of a process and what are the resources which a process actually provides to the threads. The first thing that every process has is a unique identifier called process ID. You can think of it like the numerical username of each process on the operating system. Different instances of the same process will have different process IDs. This makes it easier for the operating system to manage multiple processes. The next thing every process has is a virtual address space. This is basically a region of memory which is assigned to every process to allow it to indirectly access the RAM. Indirectly because it is considered to be a good practice to not allow user mode processes to directly access the RAM because if they were allowed and something goes wrong, it can be bad for the whole operating system. This virtual address space is divided into two parts. The first one is the user mode part and the second one is obviously the kernel mode part. The user mode part is used to store data structures, variables, code and other stuff. While the kernel mode region of the memory is used to store data structures and other information regarding the process. This virtual address space is also private means that it can only be accessed by the process which it belongs to. Next up we have a handle table. If you do not know what handles are, these are basically a type of object on windows which allow user mode code to indirectly access kernel mode objects. Each of these handles is assigned a number and this number is stored in the handle table. Each of these number is stored with a corresponding kernel mode memory address of a certain object in the handle table. This table is stored in the kernel mode part of the virtual memory of a process. Thus, it cannot be accessed by the user mode code of a process. The next thing that every process has is obviously the executable code. This code is stored in the virtual address space of the process and is used by the threads for execution. The access token defines the security context of a process which is used by the operating system to check the identity information of a process such as which user does it belong to and what are the privileges does it have etc. The process environment block or the PEB is a huge user mode data structure which contains a lot of information about the process such as what were the arguments provided when launching the process what modules or DLLs are loaded by the process, if it is being debugged by a debugger or not, etc. If you want to look into the full structure of a PEB, you can check the link in the description. Next up, we have two very huge data structures, eProcess and KProcess. Both of them are stored on the kernel memory of a process. eProcess is a kernel representation of a process, meaning that it uses all the information inside the E process data structure in order to manage a process on the operating system. The key process data structure smart the e process data structure and both of them contains almost all of the information there is about the process. Both of these data structures are not officially documented by Microsoft. If you want to look into them, you can find a link in the description. So the summary of all these is that a process has a process ID which is its unique identifier on the operating system then its virtual memory is divided into two parts a user mode one and a kernel mode one it has an access token which is the security context of the process which stores information about what are the things that the process can access which user has created it etc 
then it has a PEB or the process environment block which contains another hell lot of information about the process on the user mode and on the kernel side we have two data structures the K process and the E process E process is a kernel representation of a process on the Windows operating system and the K process is a part of the E process data structure and the handle table is stored on the kernel mode side of the process memory which is used to store the memory addresses of each handle that a process has opened now it's time to learn about threads so let's get started in order to learn about threads you will first have to understand this concept of thread scheduling thread scheduling allows a single cpu to execute multiple threads by switching between them so let's take an example suppose that the cpu is executing this brew thread and now it wants to switch to the next thread what it will do before switching is that it will pause the thread and store the information that is present in the CPU registers while this thread is executing and store it in the memory in a data structure called context and then it will switch to the next thread. The next time this thread whose context is stored in the memory comes to execute the CPU will first load the context so all the CPU register values will be restored and the, and the thread will continue to execute. Every thread on the system has two stacks a user mode stack and a kernel mode stack. The user mode stack is used for normal purposes such as for storing the values of variables, the return addresses of functions, etc. The kernel mode stack is rather used as a security mechanism. It is obviously not accessible from the user mode code. When a thread calls a syscall from the user mode, all the arguments provided to that syscall are copied from the user mode stack of the thread to its kernel mode stack. It is done this way because after a thread uses a syscall, the CPU switches to the kernel mode and then the kernel mode code validates those arguments to see if all the pointers, structures, etc. that are passed as arguments are valid or not. And since this stack is not accessible from the user mode, a thread cannot manipulate the arguments after they have been validated. And this way, having two stacks works as a security measure. So just like processes, Threads also have their unique identity called the thread ID, which is used by the operating system to identify them. Next up, we have thread affinity. This is a property of threads, which allow us to force windows to run a thread on a specific CPU only. So let's say you, you set the affinity of a thread to CPU 3, then the thread will only execute on the CPU number 3. Next up, we have this thick data structure called the thread environment block or the TEB. It, info it stores a lot of information about the thread on the user mode side. So this is different from the process environment block or the PEB. That is for the process and this TEB is for the thread. And just like processes, threads also have these two kernel mode data structures. The E thread, which is the kernel mode representation of a thread and K thread. One thing to remember is that these are not the only structures that exist on the kernel mode for representing a process or a thread. These are the most important ones. That's why I am mentioning them to learn something new. And if you find this video interesting, please share it with your friends. And this was all for this one. I hope you learned something new. And if you find this video interesting, please share it with your friends.